So Vitaly is one of our interns, and we are so happy to have our interns with us. And thank you so much for agreeing to testify. It's amazing. Would you please share where you're from? I'm from Portland, Oregon. And how did you end up in this program in, in internship? Well, I started watching Pastor Vlad's videos about two years ago, and so I just became really passionate about his videos and uh, sharing them with my friends and uh, just got connected to Hungry Giant, so. Come on, let's put our hands together. You're so welcome. Now, let's begin. Would you please share with us what was the thing that you struggled with and the things in your past? Um, well, I, I became like really addicted to drugs from a very young age. Like, so in like seventh grade, I started like really smoking weed and smoking cigarettes. And uh, from then on, like in eighth grade, I, uh, I started doing heroin. And just like in the Russian culture and Slavic culture, like the, that was like the main uh, drug to go to. So I started uh, shooting up heroin like from a young age, 14 years old. And uh, so what led you actually to do that at such a young age? And how, how were your parents? Did they know about this? You were only like 13, 14 years of age. Um, my parents knew about it, but I was very clever, clever young, young child. Um, so very rebellious, always got my own way. You know, like my parents, of course, always wanted the best for me and um, always didn't. They, of course, never wanted me to use drugs, but uh, I always got my own way, you know, because I was rebellious. So. so what caused you to start doing drugs? Uh, it was my own curiosity. I would see people do do heroin around me and do meth around me. So I was always like, that's like, I'm, I was curious like what it felt like to use, you know? So um, I just kind of started hanging out with that crowd. So that crowd, okay, what's gonna begin to happen in your life and how did you end up in the rehab? Um, so after like two years, like 14 to 16, I was pretty much shooting up, like just doing drugs all the way until I was 16 years old. So two years had gone by, gone by in that addiction. I, I went to a rehab center and I had an infection in my neck and my lymph nodes were all swollen because I had uh, bad bacteria in, in my blood because I was using uh, in an unsanitary way. So uh, when I went to, I, I got sent to a rehab center from the hospital and um, from then, I, I, I couldn't call my parents. You want me to can just share? Like, is that okay? Okay. <laughs> um, I, I went. Let's start with um, what caused you to use drugs? How did you feel inside? You mentioned to me that you felt empty from the young age, that you were always bullied, you were lonely, and things like that. Would you kind of start in that way? Um, well, it was just really my own curiosity uh, that just caused me to want to use drugs. Like, uh, I like how my friend put it. She said that some, we have an infinite hole in our heart, it seems like. And so oftentimes we seek certain pleasures in this world, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drinking, but only an infinite God can fill that infinite hole in a person's heart. So uh, I started seeking... I started, I, started, uh, I started seeking, I wasn't seeking God, you know, and, but I didn't know that I wanted God. I was, I was looking in all the wrong places for that high. So when you end up in a rehab center, would you please share with us what happened to you? How did you uh, experience God there? So about three days into this rehab center, uh, I was withdrawing off drugs, uh, and I approached this lady, and I'm like, hey, I need help. I really need help. Like, I didn't know why I was asking her for help, but I wasn't asking her for help because I was withdrawing off drugs, and like, that didn't even phase me. I wanted help because I felt so empty inside. And so I said, uh, she said, why don't you go into your room and ask God to send you his angels? 
So I went into my room, and I'm like squandering down the hallway. I get into my room, and it's like midnight, really late at night. Nobody's in my room, and I just, I just say, God, I'm like, God, will you send me your angels? I just prayed a simple prayer. God, I ask you to send me your angels. And I lay down on my bed, and nobody's in my room. I'm just laying down on my center, center bed. And out of nowhere, this hail started, like, falling on my roof, like, really, really loud. Just loud hail, a loud storm. Like, to this day, I've never heard hail on a roof that loud in my life. And uh, then out of nowhere, I'm, like, laying on my bed, and my whole entire ceiling lit up with a light. Like, boom, open vision right away. And I could, and then I saw... As I'm like laying on the bed, I saw this light across my whole ceiling, and I saw this right illuminated hand come through my ceiling and just come and touch me, and I was filled with fire like across my whole body from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I'm watching this vision take place, but I'm seeing it spiritually but also physically. So I'm literally watching like a movie like in front of my eyes. And it was, uh, I was just filled with heat, and I couldn't even walk. <laughs> I tried to get out of my bed. It was hard to walk. (laughs) Come on. So what happened right after that uh, experience for the next few days? How did you feel? Did you know that was God that touched you, that Jesus Christ? How did you actually end up giving your life to Jesus Christ after that? Um, So I knew I was having an encounter with God. When I got out of the rehab center, uh, I had a small derail, a small relapse uh, for a little while. Uh, I was clean for about 10 months, but I relapsed because uh, I wasn't so grounded on God's word. But then I was like, you know what? This is just miserable. This is just lame. You know, I remember I had that encounter with God in the past. I remember that moment. And I was like, I was really, really curious to see what it was like to walk with God. I was curious. I wanted to know, like, what is it really like to actually walk hand in hand with God? What is it really like to walk with Christ? And so I, I was like, you know, I'm just going to go to a, a detox center. Get, I'm just going to, I'm making a plan. I'm just going to start following Jesus and get passionate about Jesus. And, and then ever since then, I've never used drugs again. It's been about three years. And, uh, Come on, guys. This is our God. Good job. Hallelujah. We are so happy for you. And, you know, when you experience God, you know, maybe for someone it's not going to be this dramatic. But when God touches you, you know it. And you can never, ever compare the touch of God to any drug that you have ever experienced. Whatever he was, you know, experiencing that day with God, he wanted that back. But when he actually decided to follow Jesus Christ, regardless the emotions and the experiences. This is when the stability came into his life. That takes a decision. Vitaly, would you please share a word of advice to people, maybe to young people that are curious and they feel rejected and they are trying to, you know, uh, go into drugs and experiment with different kind of things. What would you tell them? I would say don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. <laughs> you <laughs> don't do it because it, you will put yourself on a path of destruction. You will, I, when I was doing drugs, I didn't know that how much time, how much of my life would be wasted. All those good grades that I was supposed to get in school. All, uh, not graduating on time. Not not causing all that pain to my mom, causing all the pain to my brothers and my family and to my cousins. All that stuff just ruined everything. I I allowed Satan to use me. I allowed Satan in my life. And that's what happens when you use drugs. And it's it's either you follow Jesus on the narrow path or you go, or you're going to a path of, of destruction and darkness. It's either you are you're going to walk in the light of life or in, in, the, in the darkest ways. So it's either one way or another. And, and trust me, Jesus' way is number one. His high is the best high. There is, there is no high. There is, there is no high that's better than the Holy Spirit. 
No high at all. He's the best high ever. Better, I've, done, I've done all the cocaine. I've done all the crack. I've, I've done all of that stuff. I've done all the meth and heroin. Trust me, nothing compares to the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus.